sing a blood song. Y'all want to? Hallelujah. Everybody say thank you Jesus for shedding your blood. Hallelujah. Say I overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of my testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus.
comes. It heals the sick, it mends the heart. This love gives us access to the very throne of God. This blood, it goes the distance, no matter where you are. This blood is for you. Hallelujah. Yes, it's a blood. Right knee. 
their right knee. Who is that? In your right knee. Thank you, Jesus. Who is it, huh? Who's coming? Oh, Josh coming. All right. Amen. Healing in your right knee. Thank you, Jesus. Is it in, you in pain? Is it hurt now? What happened to it? Uh-huh. How long has it been hurting? Okay, wow. And it hurts every day? It's hurting right now. In the name of Jesus. The blood. The blood. The blood. All pain goes now and everything that's out of order comes into divine order. Every ligament, every tendon, every muscle, every joint, every cartilage, everything comes into line with the word of God. Jesus himself took our infirmities. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord. Check it out. Check it out. Got a right knee problem? Is that right? Well, where is uh, where's Dean? Yeah, she's got a cartilage problem in her right knee. Come up here, Dean. Both of them? Uh, Dean, you had a, what happened to you? Come here. Yours just popped and went out here a few years ago, right? And the doctor said, uh, wait till after Christmas, she's going to have surgery, right? And uh, he came in here on crutches and he had a steel bar. I guess it was steel or was it lead? Yeah, they had it wrapped up. And what happened to you that day? Got healed, ran up and down the steps, ran around. Been healed ever since. He ran up and down the steps and danced. And, yeah. Jesus himself took our infirmities. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. The blood of Jesus took care of this 2,000 years ago. Lord, I thank you for the working of miracles day to replace any cartilage or anything, any anything that's out of order that comes into divine order. I thank you, but by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was it your right knee? Yeah, I know you hurt yours a while back. Huh? I believe this is your last day of that foolishness. <laughs> Amen. Next time I see you in Walmart, you won't be in one of them little buggies. You'll be pushing one. Everybody say, Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a miracle worker. One way that Jesus heals it's through the laying on of hands. It's not the only way he heals, but it's one way. I feel that anointing on me right now. In the name of Jesus, I command this pain to leave and whatever is out of order to come into divine order in the name of Jesus. Enough of anything is enough. And I thank you for this miracle today, Father. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. The blood brings healing today. Sing the song. No matter where you are, this blood is for for you, Miss Marinelle. The blood was for you. The land. I just saw this, I just saw it was like a, I 
just saw something like I, it was anointings what I saw but it was like something started in your knee and it went all over your body not just started in your knee but it went all over your body to affect the cure the anointing by the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood hallelujah Jesus I didn't know you had a knee problem Thank you, Father. Uh, Geraldine, come here and put, lay your hand on her back. Where is it? Where is that nerve? And then manifest in the knee. Put your hand right there, baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you are the healer. You are the miracle worker. To you be all the glory for your healing and for your shed blood. Oh, in the name of Jesus, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. There's healing, there's healing, there's healing in the blood. <laughs> no matter where you are, this blood is for you. It's the blood of the Lamb. That's right, it's, it's doing it, it's doing it, it's doing it, it's doing it. It's a soul. It will heal and heal you. Let it make your I command everything that's out of order to come into divine order. And pain you cannot exist in the temple of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep singing. Say it. Jesus is a healer. Blood, save a soul. Heal the sick. Amen. start something he's not going to finish just keep your faith amen out there hallelujah praise God hallelujah let me tell you something go ahead and be seated when the anointing comes he comes for a purpose when the anointing comes he's looking for a place to go 
Y'all not listening to me, are you? I said, when the anointing comes, he's looking for a place to go. It's not rocket science, folks. Amen. <laughs> well, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is upon Linda to do the uh, announcements, but she's not with us today. So I don't know what we're going to do. She's with her mama. Her mama found a church, so she went to support her mama today. I said, uh, you know, I don't know. We talked about it a little bit last week. You know, in the last two or three years, we've lost a lot of finances. We've lost a lot of good tithers. Good tithers. So uh, what we're deciding in the midst of this is just to go ahead and pay this place off. Amen. Are y'all with me or not? This ain't a me thing, it's a us thing. And I said last week we owed $140,000. Now that's, that's all we owe on two and a quarter million dollars worth of stuff. I mean, that's, that's not much compared. And so Miss Gill said it's more like now. What is it? We had some come in, but when she did the numbers, what was it? 125,750. So it's not as bad as we thought it was. Amen. And so we started already when, when, we, when we started talking about this, different people started coming up with strategies. Now that lets me know that you're excited about it. Amen. But one strategy that came up because our daycare has been doing real well. We've had, added 10 or 12 kids in the last, I don't know, couple of months. And so somebody, one of the elders came up with this idea uh, that it's time for the daycare because see the daycare has never really contributed anything to the church because it's just barely been able to exist itself and uh, but now the daycare is going to start tithing to the church amen every week the daycare is going to tithe to the church amen and so that will give opportunity for God to bless the daycare and, to, and, and by the way I don't know if you didn't know it, we've got the best daycare in the world we got the best workers in the world. We got the best committee. They're not, trust me, they're not, they're not there for the money. Amen. But, uh, but, but, but I, I, we're going to come up with something. Now, Geraldine and I, we've already come up with a strategy. You know, if you looked at your finances real well, you might find, and that's not everybody, but you might find some areas that, that money's going that it really doesn't need to go there. Sometimes you just need to tighten things up a little bit. And so we're already thinking and we've already got a plan going here as to what we're going to do. But we're going to sit down and put pencil and paper to it and let's just see uh, what it would take to pay this thing off by the end of the year. $125,000. Now, if you can't, I'm going to tell you like I told the guy years ago. If you can't believe women, don't even think about it. If you can't, you know, if you can't hook up with me in faith, then just stay neutral. <laughs> Don't even try to believe. Amen. You just shut your mind off to the whole thing. Amen. But those of you that can believe and we can agree together, we're going to see this thing paid off. Amen. Hallelujah. And that'll free up another like $1,800 a month. Amen. Because we need stuff done around here. We believe in excellence and we want to... We want, to, we want to do some things for our youth. We want to do a lot of things. Amen. And uh, so God is our provider. Is that right? Amen. Uh, since the, the announcer of announcements is not here, that's about all I got to say. Other than, you know, we won't have service tonight. On these holidays, you don't ever know if, like, you know, if mama's going to be, uh, if, if the people are going to go be with their mamas like Linda or if the people are going to bring their mamas. You know what I'm saying? So it all kind of balances out, amen. Uh, but so we're going to call a service off tonight. We've started doing that on special days, Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, other special days. We call them the Sunday night service off uh, because, let, let me tell you something. We have plenty of church around here. It's almost seven days a week now. As a matter of fact, we had uh, yesterday... We had three salvations yesterday. Amen. 
Uh, I've got a lot of numbers here. We had one salvation uh, at the Bible study. What was it Tuesday night? See, they're, they're having a Bible study now in the area where we've been going in and, and ministering to the people. Uh, had four rededications this this uh, in Oasis Friday night. Amen. Uh, and we've got people who are interested in uh, Oasis. We gave away 16 bags of food, put door knockers on 13 doors, uh, knocked on 27 doors. Amen. God can bless something, but he can't bless nothing. Amen. Everybody say, God can bless something, but he can't bless nothing. Amen. So we're doing, we're giving God something to bless, aren't we? Amen. Praise God. So now, if you want to go ahead and give us $125,000 this morning, feel free. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just deal with this thing right. We'll knock it right in the head. But listen to me. The, you know, I've looked up... Uh, the word warfare, the word warfare in the Strong's Concordance. You know, the word warfare is used in the New Testament only two or three times. But uh, when you look up the word warfare in the Strong's Concordance, you know what you find? These words, apostolic career. Apostolic churches are warring churches because the devil hates them. Now here's the problem. If you're sitting and you are connected to an apostle in an apostolic church, uh, you, you'll have to learn to fight or die or get taken out. I'm sorry. I wish I could change it. See, when Apostle Paul and his apostolic team went places, when he got locked up, they got locked up with him. Mm -hmm. when, when, he, when he got beat, they got beat. Unless, you, unless you're ready for a good, unless you're looking for a good fight, don't, don't fool around with an apostle. Amen. Uh, I, I made a list this morning. I was thinking about a few years ago because apostles are, they're spiritual fathers. And what I mean by spiritual fathers is they are fathers to their, the people that God has connected to them. But then there's another level of apostolic fathering that has to do with those that are called into the, what we call the fivefold ministry like Titus and Timothy was Paul's spiritual sons. And so a few years ago, before I had the revelation of the apostolic, all of a sudden God birthed a desire on the inside of me to raise up ministers. And I met with six. I called six young people together and I began to minister to them on a monthly basis. We would just meet. Out of those six, you know how many I got left? I do have one. Linda, <laughs> she's the last of the Mohegans. <laughs> one out of six. One out of six. Amen. I don't know if that's a typical or not, but. Uh, I'm just letting you know. And the reason I'm saying that is because here's what happens. One of my best givers, one of the givenest people in the church, called me yesterday after we talked about this last week and told me how they had been attacked financially. And uh, they had been in the business they in for 30 years and never had this to happen before. But now it's happened. They call me to pray. Well, I can pray for them. I can pray because they're givers and because they're committed. I mean, they, I can plead their case because they got a good case to plead. They're givers. Amen. But see, and so they'll come out on top and they'll win. They will absolutely win. 
But that doesn't mean that they're not going to be attacked. You can't have a victory, amen, without a, without a fight. You can't have a testimony without a test. Isn't that right? Amen. You can't have a resurrection without a death. So anyway, if you get attacked, just keep your head up. Don't submit and don't give in to the devil. Amen. If you committed something, if you, if you, you, you have a desire, you keep pushing, you keep pressing. That's the difference in apostolic people and people. But so anyhow. Apostolic people win because they get up one more time than they go down. Amen. So are you ready to give with all that great exhortation and edification? <laughs> Amen. All right, won't you stand up and we'll pray and then uh, we'll bring our tithes and offerings. And when we do so, we'll take a couple of minutes to edify one another. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you that you supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you for giving grace. And we thank you, Father, that there's always more than enough to do what you want done. Well, I thank you, Father God, the greatest day is ahead. The path of the justice is shining light. We've not plateaued. Amen. Father, I remember what you showed me the New Year's Eve, hallelujah, that we've been climbing a mountain. All we could see was what was in front of us. But Lord, this is a year in which we come to the top and we're able to see for miles and miles and miles. And we thank you for that today, Lord. We thank you, Father, for supernatural increase. And we call this place debt-free for the purpose of your kingdom. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen, amen, amen. Bring your, bring your own.
God. You know, y'all look like you so happy and feel so good. Uh, I almost hate to preach. Because I can fix that in a little bit. <laughs> All right. Listen, we thank you for being here. It's good to see you this morning. Amen. God loves us all in spite of us. Amen. Amen. Turn with me uh, to Mark, the 11th chapter. Mark chapter 11. Now, you know, uh, I had a hard time uh, accepting myself years and years and years. And uh, because I'm different. I have a different message, have a different style. One place I went in a conference and I, I preached out in Tulsa in the, you know, how they make up these tape packages, you know, all the, all the speakers. They left mine out. <laughs> Said the people weren't ready for it. I went to preach one, uh, for one fellow and he got up and uh, said, now he's different. He's trying to he's warning the people, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so, uh, you know, uh, I had a hard time for a long time because, I, because of my difference, no, my uniqueness. I just never did like to see uh, cookie cutter preachers. You know, and, and you can, I used to be able to, you know, if, if I could just hear them preach for a little bit, I could tell you what camp they were from because they all acted the same way. They all walked the same. Amen. <laughs> Well, it's so in here. All right. So then sometimes, you know, I, I wind up preaching and teaching things that it seems like uh, nobody else is doing. But uh, if it's the truth, it's the truth. Mark chapter 11. Now, before you turn me off and say I know everything there is to know about this scripture, you might want to hang on just a little bit. Because I might, I could say something different. It's possible. Amen. The 12th verse says, and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry, that is Jesus. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now, I want you to see something here. Jesus said, I do always those things that please my father. What I see my father do, that's what I do. So Jesus did not go around uh, cursing every fig tree, did he? Matter of fact, this is the only fig tree that I know of that he cursed. Now, there may be some significance. I've heard people preach that concerning Israel. That's not my message this morning, even though it might be a true message. But what he's doing is, is he goes on and he's teaching his disciples about faith is what he's doing. And so if Jesus then, uh, you know, Jesus didn't even heal everybody. Hello? Jesus didn't heal every sick person he saw. Now, as far as I know, he healed every sick person that came to him and wanted healing. But you remember, he went by the pool of Bethesda, and the Bible says there was a multitude of impotent folk there, people sick and lame with infirmities. They would come to this pool because they believed, and I guess it was true, that an angel would come down, stir the waters, and the first one to jump in the water would be healed. Well, Jesus walked right by that thing, and he spoke to one man. And he healed one man, and he left the rest of them there. Why? Did he love the rest of them? Yes. Did he want the rest of them healed? Yes. Now, after his atonement, healing belongs to all of us by faith. But you see, here's the thing. Jesus didn't heal everybody because he didn't see his father do it. Hello? Amen. He only did that which he saw his father do. So then, if he cursed this fig tree then he must have had a revelation from God. He must have saw God curse the fig tree. Isn't that right? 
because Jesus was led by the Spirit and he walked by faith. Are you with me now? So then why did he curse the fig tree? Because he's te- notice he said his disciples heard it. Now, <clears throat> let's drop on down to the 19th verse. Of course, they go into the city and they come out. Uh, and when even was come, he went in out of the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, here's a thought that I always like to bring out. Because you said, well, just like, the, just like we, we, we prayed for people this morning. Well, some of them now do not have a full manifestation yet. But see, when something is done in the roots, it doesn't show up in the leaves immediately. And God deals with the root of things. God doesn't just deal with the leaves. He deals with the root. Now, if you curse something from the roots, then it's going to take a season for the leaves and the fruit to die. And in the morning they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now, in this particular case, the recording here, apparently they didn't see it happen when Jesus said it. And Peter calling to remember, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Now, I have a little number by my, in my Bible by the word have, and it's actually what Jesus said was have the faith of God. Have the faith of God. How many knows that when you were born again, by grace you were saved through faith, and then he, later on he says that all of us have received a measure of faith. Well, if you received the measure of faith, where did the faith come from? Did the faith come from God? Sure it did. So it's, it must be God's faith. So if you have faith, it's God's faith. Amen. Amen. By the way, the title of my lesson this morning is Faith That Won't Work. (laughs) Hmm. He said, have the faith of God. So if he says to them, have the faith of God, there must be a potential for them to have that faith. And he goes on and tells them and shows them how it works. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, therefore I say unto you, well, first of all, let's let's deal with this. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, you believe, you receive, and you shall have. This is what we call the prayer of faith. This prayer is a prayer that you pray for you and for your needs. You can't necessarily make this prayer work for somebody else. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, you believe, you receive. When you start praying for somebody else, you get into a whole another realm. Because you get into, well, what do they believe? Amen. And you get into, you don't know what their need really is. And if, and if you don't know, see, because you, you, if you're not careful, you'll be praying for the symptoms instead of the root. Amen. That's why when it comes to intercession, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. We have to be led by Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? Now, later on, this is what we found out. In Romans 10, 17, Paul said this. So then faith cometh. Now, watch this. Faith cometh, how does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing. Everybody say hearing. Hearing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now you understand that Jesus wasn't mad at the fig tree. He didn't curse the fig tree because it didn't have figs on it. He's teaching. I mean, if that was true, he would go around the whole city and find every tree that wasn't producing and cursed it but he didn't. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. 
Now, notice this. Faith doesn't come by reading. Faith doesn't come by even being able to quote the word. Faith cometh by hearing when you hear. When you hear. Now, in 1994, you know the testimony. This is, if I had a better, better illustration, I'd use it, but this is the one I got because I lived it. In 1994, my wife became ill with a dreaded, deadly disease, a very rare disease. And so she was in the hospital 10 days, two different times, in uh, Royston, and then they sent her to uh, Athens Regional, she was in intensive care for 33 days. Okay. On that Easter Sunday in uh, 1994, and she had had all these things going on. She had, uh, I can't tell you, but I mean, I can't go through everything, but basically they were telling me that if she even lived at all, then her mind would not be right because, you know, her, her, in her brain, everything was inflamed. Her whole body was inflamed because her, her blood arteries were inflamed within and without her immune system was trying to fight her and kill her. And so she was on a ventilator for 15 days to help her breathe or to breathe for her. And she was dialyzed. You know what dialysis is because uh, her blood, her kidneys weren't working and uh, her, the waste, uh, you know, the, your kidneys is what filters your blood, cleanses your your blood. Well, hers wasn't working, so they had to put her on dialysis. This machine takes all the blood out, cleans it up, and puts it back in. Amen. They were doing that every day and every other day, basing on what her blood work said. Okay. So I never forget that this was on Easter Sunday, and we, I came to church. And when I was going into the uh, uh, the hospital in the waiting room, I ran into the kidney doctor. Now she had about five or six different doctors, but this was a kidney doctor. And he stopped to tell me, he said, uh, we can't, we, we got, I, he said, I got some more bad news. He said, we can't dialyze her anymore because she's allergic to the blood thinner. If you're going to dialyze her, you got to thin the blood before it runs through the machine and she's allergic to it. So we can't do that dialysis anymore. And I said, well, you know, you can't, you can't do dialysis what does that mean? Well, you know, in a few days she's going to die. That's what it means. And so I said, well, isn't there another uh, uh, medicine out there? Isn't, isn't there another blood thinner? He said, not now. He said, they got some, they're researching some right now. He said, we might could get a special, uh, through a, some kind of special request, we might could get them to release it. Uh, in her situation, but, but see, I hadn't passed the final test. You know, these medicines have to go through a process, but since, <clears throat> but they don't, before this process is over, she'll already be gone. In other words, we don't have enough time for you to get these other kinds of, of uh, blood thinner. This is 1994, but she's allergic. So now you see, we've been at this for 43 days. Actually, she have gotten sick. And we tried to use our faith. Actually, she's been sick two months now. And now I'm getting the worst news of all. Okay? So uh, that was pretty de devastating. You know what I'm saying? But I had been walking around, and I had been praying in tongues, and I was saying with my mouth that my wife will not die but live. My wife will not die but live. The word of God tells me I can have what I say and I say that she will live and not die. And I said it. The first time I said it, I didn't have any faith. I just said it. The hundredth time I said it, I didn't have any faith. When I said it 1,000 times, I still didn't have any faith. I'm just saying it. When I said it 5,000 times, I still didn't have any faith. But somewhere after thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times of saying it over and over and over and over and over, because that's what I was taught to do. Faith cometh by hearing. So what I did was I kept saying it 
until one morning I woke up. See, now this was on Sunday when I got the bad report. On Monday, and I've been saying it and saying it and saying it, on Monday I woke up and on the inside of me, I heard these words. Now I say I heard, I didn't hear a voice. I didn't see a vision. I didn't have a dream. I didn't have a goosebump. All I knew were these words were floating around in my mind. And the words were, be not afraid, only believe. I looked at Mark, the fifth chapter, where, because I knew I've been preached it. I don't know how many times I've preached from that. Be not afraid. J. Iris, you know, they came to J. Iris. You know, J. Iris came to Jesus and he said to my, my, my little girl's sick. She's dying. Would you come? Jesus is on the way. On the way down there, of course, you had the one with the issue of blood. It came up and touched the hem of the garment. She got healed. And then the people from the house said, don't bother the master anymore because your daughter's already dead. It's too late. Okay. And Jesus said to J. Iris, be not afraid, only believe. See, now here, I've just got this report. She's not physically dead yet, but I've got the report that says she's practically die, dying, okay? So that morning, I woke up. Now, here's what you got to understand. It wasn't, I had read that. I had read that. There's no telling how many hundreds and hundreds of times I'd read it. And there's no telling how many times I preached from it. And there's no telling how many times I quoted it. But just because I quoted it and just because I preached it and just because I read it didn't mean I had faith. You mean you can read it and you can preach it, amen, and still not have faith? Absolutely. Matter of fact, you can sit and listen to me this morning and the words that I say and still not have a bit of faith. Because faith doesn't come by me preaching to you. As a matter of fact, could I say this? Faith doesn't come by you hearing what I'm saying. Faith cometh when you hear. So now here's a scripture that was here all the time and I've preached it and I've read it and I've confessed it, but all of a sudden now, all of a sudden, and I heard, I heard Jesus. So basically this, I heard Jesus say this to Jairus hundreds and hundreds of times. But I never heard him say it to me. That morning he said it to me. Do you know what happened when, now see, I'm, I've, I've, been, I've been confessing, 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 and when you're confessing, you're hoping. But there will come a time if you don't give up, if you don't quit. Now you've got to understand, I had a special investment here. <laughs> This wasn't me praying for somebody out here in the wild blue yonder. This is my wife. Amen. We had prophecies. We had words about ministry and about things together. And this did not fit with the plan of our life. She and I are one. So then I can, I can, I can believe for her if she wants to believe. I can, I can, I can pray her out of this if she's in agreement. See, you can't get this to work for anybody anywhere. That faith won't work. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But anyway, so I woke up and these words are just floating around. But you know something changed. That day, I got up and went to the hospital and I was different because faith had come. Faith had come. Now I'm not saying it, hoping it. Now I'm saying it because I really believe it. Now I'm saying it because I got it. Hello? If you don't got it, say it till you get it. And then say it because you got it. <laughs> One day, I walked in faith after two months. I walked in faith from that morning all the way through that. Oh, as a matter of fact, when I went to the, when I went to the hospital that day, the neurologist came in because she was, excuse this expression, she's nutty as a cat, fruit cake. I mean, her mind was inflamed with all of this stuff and so she, th she thought I was a samurai warrior. <laughs> and she wouldn't, she wouldn't, she, I tried to give her something, you know, she wouldn't take any pills, she wouldn't do anything. She, she, was, she was like, she was nuts. 
And so they came in there, this neurologist came in there and he would take an ink pen and he would get her to fill of it because she was blind, you see. Because, you know, these things that blocked her in her mind, she couldn't see. It wasn't her eyes, it was the part of the brain. That's it. And he, was, he would let her fill of the ink pen and see if she could tell him what it was. And then the car keys, the keys he was trying to, and I don't know, did you get it right every time? I don't remember who you, you didn't get it right every time. Some things she got right, some things, some things she didn't. Now I remember, I just woke up with word, and I got faith now. So the neurologist then, after he examines her, he says to me, he's, is this boring, y'all? He, he takes me, he said, come with me. He takes me down the hallway to this little room. We go in this little room, and he says, uh, you know, he said, this Wegner's disease is some bad stuff. And he says, because uh, Dr. Lucas had already told me that she had strokes, you know, and we come to find out it wasn't, I don't think it, it wasn't strokes, it was the inflammation that they were seeing in the brain, you know. But anyway, uh, this doctor, this neurologist said, now, you know, he said, uh, uh, you know, this is bad. And I, he finally, and, I, and I'm on the inside of me, I'm just saying, be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid. I mean, I, what, he, what he had to say was just like pouring water off a duck's back. It didn't phase me one way or the other because now I'm in faith. It's the first day I've been in faith in months, but I'm in faith now. Amen. Amen. And so he's telling me all this stuff. And I said, well, let me ask you something, Doc, because I want to get some ammunition to beat the devil with. I said, have you ever seen anybody recover? Uh, you, know, they're, 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 you know, this brain is in this condition. And he's trying to encourage me. And he said, yeah. He said, I did. He said, uh, well, he said, uh, uh, he said, I did, I knew one woman that, that, that came out of it, but her mind had been affected to where uh, she couldn't even live with anybody. She had to live by herself. She couldn't function around with other people. And uh, I don't know if he called himself encouraging me or not, but, but I'm still, it didn't phase me. Didn't phase, why? Because I'm in faith. The day before I was, or the yeah, day before I wasn't, but I am now. And so what he's saying, do you know this stuff is real? Do y'all know the Bible's true? And so it didn't bother me a bit. I didn't make a bit of difference in the world because I was in faith. Well, so I, I, I walked by faith all that day. I went home. I come in the next morning and the male nurse said to me, he said, uh, he said, Mr. Coker, he said, keep your fingers crossed, he said. Keep your fingers crossed. He said, because we checked her blood this morning and her blood work is better. It looks like her kidneys are beginning to work, which means she won't have to have dialysis anymore. So now we don't need the blood thinner anymore. Amen. And he said, if you can get her to take these pills, then, then, then she, we won't have to put that tube back but, back in her stomach. And I said, uh, well, okay. And it took me an hour and a half because she thinks I'm a semi-hour warrior. I had a, <clears throat> and I'll tell you, these pills were so powerful uh, that, that you had to wear gloves. You couldn't handle them because what she was taking, if you, if it, it, it could give you cancer. Amen. That's how powerful it was. And so I finally, I finally, because she wouldn't take it and then, and I had got a little glass of apple juice, and so I would I finally get her to take a pill. And, I, and, and before, I, after about an hour and a half, she'd taken all those pills, but also she had drunk two of those little uh, cups of apple juice, which is, means it's the first thing she's had on her stomach in weeks. Yes. Amen, her stomach's not bit, you know, so now she's got something in her stomach. I thought, you know, praise God. Well, that... That evening, a preacher friend of mine came to see her about, I guess it was four or five o'clock in, in the evening. And he, he went in and uh, we were in there and uh, I said, because uh, I didn't think she would or could, but I said, you know who this is? And she said, uh, yeah. I said, that's uh, so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, I looked over there and Miss Callie was in the room. I said, well, who's that standing over there by the window? 
She said, that's Miss Kelly. See, she's seeing now. You see what I'm saying? And then, uh, so I said, well, you know, my goodness, what kind of deal is this? And then, then this other preacher started, they started, Geraldine and this other preacher, because we went to Gatlinburg with them, oh, I don't know, 10 years before, and they started talking about going to Gatlinburg and what we did. I didn't know what they were talking about. I done forgot it. Amen. <laughs> and I'm standing there, you know, my, my mind's spinning because I'm saying, my Jesus here. Well, make a long story short, uh, I, mean, I don't know why I told you all that, but she came out of it super naturally. Amen. Matter of fact, the night, uh, the night we had Brother Hagin's tape uh, playing all this time too were, with those healing scriptures. I had that running in her head. And so when I was in there, I'd read the Bible to her and confess the word and confess the healing scriptures. I had God's little promises book and all that kind of stuff. But it was the night before um, what happened was, I see, was that the night before? Uh, yeah, she had she had come to herself enough. She asked the Lord to take these all these tubes out. Man, she had tubes everywhere, and uh, that's what He told me that morning. Because that, you pulled your feeding tube out, yeah, that, isn't that the way it goes? She pulled it. They know it better than I do. They remember it better than I do because they 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 went through it with me. These four people over here did, and so. He, she had asked the Lord to, to take these tubes out of her. And so when I got in that morning, the male nurse said, uh, she's jerked our tubes out. <laughs> but if you'll get her to take these pills. Well, see, she says that an angel came in there at night and took those tubes out. They said she jerked them out. She says an angel did it. Well, it must have been God because she never did have to put them back in. She's had them in there for, for 30 something days. Amen. Amen. Did you know faith works? Yes. Now, what, what my point was this, all of that to tell you this. <laughs> faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not what I'm saying this morning. It's what you're hearing. Right. You can hear Apostle David or you can hear Holy Ghost. Right. You can hear Apostle David or you can hear God. Right. If you hear God, faith has come. Yes. If you hear David, then nothing's come. Right. Maybe some knowledge. Amen. Especially if you, if you take the notes. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I, I didn't mean to do all that, uh, but maybe it's for somebody out there on the internet. Amen? Amen? Now, when Jesus, now let me ask you this. So Jesus speaks to the fig tree, the fig tree drives up. Let me tell you something else that was involved here. First of all, we had words that were spoken, right? Yes. The God kind of faith works with words. Yes. God never created anything until he spoke it. Yes. He said, let us make man. He said, light be. When God said light be, there's no way light couldn't be. And the reason is because God is truth. Everything that comes out of his mouth is truth. And you can't change truth. Right. Amen. Amen. So whatever he's, God says out of his mouth is. Because yes. right. he is, he's I am. Amen. Yes. But now Jesus, he speaks to the fig tree. But let me ask you this. Do you think Jesus was anointed when he did it? He would have to be. Because, see, you know, he's already received the anointing back there. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Now, the reason I say this is this. We're going somewhere if y'all stay with me long enough to get there. <sighs> Jesus was anointed. He walked in the Spirit. The anointing comes for a purpose. God anoints purpose. So when he spoke to that fig tree, he was speaking God's will, God's mind under God's anointing. See, without the anointing teaching you, you're not going to be able to hear. Because faith cometh by hearing, but you're not, you may hear a man, you may hear a woman, you may hear a lot of things, but faith comes through anointed words. Yes. Jesus was anointed when he spoke these words. Now, I know I've done this before, but I can tell a lot of times how things are going when I am praying about something, whether or not I get anointed or not. Yeah. And Larry and Lisa remembered this years ago. 
when, uh, when, when Sherry Carroll was pregnant with Jana and Lisa was pregnant with little Catherine at the same time. And I was in, we went in a service. We were, I was still at Word of Life at the time. And so both of them came up. I think I called them up because they were both, wasn't too many weeks before they were going to give birth. And so I wanted to pray and bless both of them. And so I, I laid my hands on Sherry and prayed for her. The anointing came. I went over there and laid my hands on uh, uh, Lisa and it was like laying a, hands on a rock. No anointing. Couldn't pray. Are you listening to me? Lisa came to the house the next day and she said, I hadn't felt the baby move in several days. See, I couldn't get anointed to pray for her and bless that baby because that baby was dead. A, a man called me one time and wanted me to come pray for his wife. He was a preacher. She, was, uh, had, she had cancer. We went in there. It was me and two other preachers. She wanted us to come and pray. We went to their home. We went in there and started praying. <clears throat> I prayed for her, Nothing. No unction, no anointing, nothing. Just, you know, trying, using every bit of faith I had, doing everything I knew to do, quote, quoting the scripture, pushing every button, pulling every lever. I mean, my God, I didn't want that woman to die. And so we got through praying for her then, and the husband says, I've got a lot of decisions to make. And said, would y'all pray for me? Because, you know, with what's going on right now, I've got decisions to make. He had cows. and He didn't know what to do with them, where he should just sell them or keep them and all this kind of stuff. And I said, we sure will. We started praying and the Spirit of God came on me. I was anointed to pray for him. I wasn't anointed to pray for her. One brother came years later and he had cancer. I remember we were praying. Uh, Y'all know who I'm talking about too. We were praying to about six of us praying in a circle down here and before this was even built and we're praying and I know he's got cancer. I know they said he's dying. He's got tumors on the brain and in his long both. And so I knew he was dying, but then, uh, but thank God he got saved, got filled with the Holy Ghost and everything. But anyway, we're praying and, and there's about six of us. We're standing in a small circle and I'm just praying and, and, and the anointing is so strong. And then my thinking, I say, well, I wanted to be healed so bad. I said, while this anointing is on me, I'm going to pray for him. So I, so I stopped the prayer. I was praying and went over and laid my hands on him. And it was just like cutting off a faucet. And he died. I was riding down the road one time praying for an individual. I was praying. The Spirit of God was all over me. The anointing was all over me. And so I started praying in another direction and everything dried up just like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. And then uh, I thought, well, now what's going on here? And I said, now, wait a minute. You know, my, my lightning quick mind said, okay. When I was praying back over here for this person, I was anointed. But now when I went on with my prayer, see, I'm not anointed. Duh. I went back, started praying with that person again. The anointing came back again. Are you, anybody learning anything? So a lot of times, now just recently, just recently. See, you can be praying in the same prayer and be anointed in one part of the prayer and change to something else in the same prayer and there's no anointing to pray. Jesus was anointed. He spoke anointed words. As a matter of fact, Jesus never prayed for people. He just spoke the anointed word and they were healed. Right. Are we doing all right? Yes. But now let's talk about, let's talk about uh, prayer or using our faith. Because see, when he said, what things soever you desire, the Bible tells us we have to rightly divide the word of God. And could I just say, whatsoever things you desire does not mean whatsoever things you desire. It couldn't. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have. So you can't believe, see, because you could pray for your mother-in-law to die. Amen. Amen but you couldn't believe for it because faith coming by here and hearing by the word of God. Hello? So that's why all those people didn't die that you prayed would die. You weren't praying in faith because you didn't hear God say, pray for them that they will die. 
but yet we try to use faith on everything and don't understand why it doesn't work. No, I'm going to tell you something else. Another thing that Jesus walked in was truth. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. See, faith won't work if you're not walking in truth. John said, I rejoice greatly that my little children, talking about his spiritual children, I rejoice greatly that my children are walking in truth. Yes. Faith won't work if you're not walking in truth. Amen. If you're not walking in the light of God's word that you have. It's mighty quiet in this church this morning. So then, see, here's the thing. You can try to believe God. You can try to use your faith. But if you're not a person of truth, guess what? It is not going to work. There's some things you cannot believe God for. Because they don't belong to you, first of all. Jesus walked in truth. Now, let me tell you what that means. That means that he wasn't just anointed. He wasn't just anointed to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to preach the gospel to the poor. He wasn't just anointed that. He lived the life. He lived the life. Now, did you know that you can be very, very gifted and very anointed and still be living a lie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was uh, listening to, uh, to, bro to, to brother or doctor brother, Paul Hegstrom. I was listening to him again. It amazes me. This man was married when he was very young, about 19, 20 years old. He came up in a preacher's house, a pastor's house, and uh, he, but when he, he had things happen to him when he was a young man. So when he got married, he abused his wife. He abused her every day. He would cuss her. He would slap her. He would break her down emotionally. Sometimes he would ask forgiveness and he really was sorry. But 30 minutes later, he'd be doing it again. And he, this went on and on and on. And this woman somehow, and now wait a minute. During this time also, at one point, he pastored a church for two years. And he would preach and get people saved and go home and beat her. You say, how can that happen? Let me tell you how it happened. You remember Brother Hagin? Brother Hagin said there was, he told this story about two old men. They were, they were drunks, actually. And they just wandered around from town to town. And so they got into this town. They didn't have any money. They couldn't get anything to drink. But they had been to church when they were little and they knew the Bible stories and things like that. And they said, well, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just start preaching. So they found him a, a, a corner, and uh, you know, street corner, and started preaching. People started gathering around. They put a bucket out there. People started getting saved. Don't tell me it can't happen. God honors his word. Yes, yes, yes. They got saved. These people weren't, the, the, the two guys doing it wasn't even saved. It was the word that they were preaching. I said it was the word they were preaching that was getting people saved. Amen. You can take an old drunk in a bar, walk in there and start talk, talking about John 3, 16. Somebody will get saved. Come on, come on. Well, God honors his word. Yes. Amen. Y'all remember Elaine Homer, don't you? Yes. You remember that when she was a young girl, now her daddy was a preacher, but she, she used to follow the, she used to work, she was a singer as a young lady. I mean, she started singing on the stage in these big tent meetings when she was just a little bitty girl. But she's a little older now, and her daddy, because, you know, you wouldn't think this about preachers, her, her, her daddy let her travel with these ministers. And so they would have these tent meetings, and she would, during the day, she would clean up the chairs and make sure everything was, was in order. And so she would get to sing in the service that night. And boy, she's anointed, still anointed, you know that. Yes. And uh, so, anyway, she said these guys, these preachers, would preach, get miracles, Get people out of wheelchairs. Anybody listening to me? And at night after the service, they'd go to the bars and get drunk and come back and rape her. She might have said that here, but she's, see, I told you, it's different. 
different. So see, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So just because you are anointed, just because you preach the word, just because you have a gift and that gift works for other people, that is the gift working through you and you can have a great, awesome anointing, a great, awesome ministry and still not be living a life of truth, living a double life. You can live like the devil when in certain situations and still come up and preach on Sunday morning. It happens all the time. Back in the 50s, now this is what happens. Back in the 50s when they had all these great tent ministries, there was over 100 of them and none of them lived their life out hardly except Brother Hagin because they based their life on faith. They lived a life. Brother Hagin says, when all you guys are gone, because see, you are preaching and you're building your ministry on your gift. I'm building my ministry on the word. So when all you guys are gone, I'll still be out there. And guess what? One of them died at 38 years old because he abused his uh, anointing. He He had the anointing but he wouldn't control his appetite. He wouldn't walk in love toward his brethren and he wouldn't handle the money right. And he died at 38 years old. There were others that were in sexual sins. There were others who were drunks. Amen. But they would empty wheelchairs. They would have great meetings, but here's what, and it would, but it only lasts for a season. It may last a year, two years, three, four, five, six, but sooner or later, unless they repent, there is going to come judgment. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So your faith will not work for you. It'll, may, it'll work for somebody else because of the gifting. But it won't work for you unless you're walking in truth. That's right. yes. So I'm talking about the faith that won't work. Some, you know, it won't work. Number one, if, I, if my faith wasn't working for me, I would first thing I'd do is I would make sure that what I was praying and believing for was the will of God. Yes. Yes. Because if it's not the will of God, the word of God is the will of God. If it's not the will of God, you can't use God's faith for something that's not his will. You can use your own foolish human faith, but you cannot use the faith of God. You can't use God's faith to believe something that is not the will of God. So if your faith is not working, then what you need to do is make sure, do whatever you have to do to make sure that what you're trying to believe for is God's will. Number two, the second thing that if your faith's not working, you have to repent. You have to search your heart. You have to find out where where am I missing it here? Why is my faith not working? Yes. Have I got unforgiveness in my, in my life? Am I not walking in the love of God? Am I living a lie? Am I a hypocrite? Do I wear a mask? Right. Do I say what people want to hear instead of the truth? Come on. Come on. Are you listening to me? Yes. You have to repent. Everybody say Repent. If you sin, you've got to confess your sins. If you confess your sin, listen, how many times have I I heard it? If you ever come to the place that you can sin and you don't have any conviction, you're in bad shape. A person that cannot feel remorse and cannot feel guilt is a psychopath. You have to be, if, if you're missing it, if you're struggling with your flesh, if there's things in your life you know God's not pleased with, you cannot say that God blesses me and that it's all right for me to sin this sin because I'm still anointed. Come on. It's all right for me to sin this sin because I'm still blessed. I can, I can continue, God must understand my sin because Look how people praise me. Look how much influence I have. All of these things does not determine 
whether you're in sin or not. You can be in sin and be blessed. You can be in sin and be anointed. Are y'all listening to me? So what's going to happen? You must repent. You must give God something to work with. That means you've got to change from the heart. Number three. I don't care if it's hair, lips, hell. The truth is the truth. And God told me to preach it. You have to ask yourself the, the third thing. When you're praying, are you praying for your will to be done? Are you praying for something to be revealed? Are you to, to hear what you want to hear? Or are you listening for the truth? See, a lot of times we're praying and we're trying to use our faith because we want to hear certain things. The truth of the matter is, God, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll say anything you want me. I'll go where you want me to go. As long. Hmm, as long as it's, if it's, as long as it's something I like. As long as it's something that I'm comfortable with. Are you praying to know something and to hear what you want to hear, are you determined to hear the truth? The fourth thing that people fall into, and this is it. You ought to write this down. You can never make up through sacrifice what you lost through disobedience. You disobey God, you go against God's word, you go against God's character. You deliberately, because you want something and you, because you want it for yourself and you do that, then it doesn't make any difference how much you fast, how much you pray, how much you worship. None of that matters at all unless you come clean and repent. Yes. The only way you get back into favor with God is through repentance. That's the only way. You can't fast enough to change something. See, your sacrifice, Jesus already paid the sacrifice. He was a sacrifice for our sin. Now all we have to do is confess our sin. Just fess up. When Achan sinned, oh Jesus, you remember that story? Do you remember it? You remember how that Joshua led the children of Israel into Canaan land. They came up against Jericho and he, he spent time with God, Joshua did, and God gave him exactly the plan and what it would take to bring those walls down and to conquer that city. And so he did exactly what God said. And guess what? They, but, but God said this. He said, don't touch anything in this city. It's not for you. But Achan decided that he saw a Babylonian garment, a wedge of gold, and he looked at that and he said, there's no need for this to be left here. There's no need for it to go to waste. And so he took it to himself. They went up against Ai and 36 men died that day. 36 men, think about it. All of them had friends, all of them had children, all of them had spouses, cousins and aunts and uncles. And how many people were affected because one man sinned? And did exactly what he knew he shouldn't be doing. And look, the whole, whole, whole nation of Israel suffered because now they've lost their confidence. Now where's God? I thought God was with us. So what happened? Joshua began to seek the Lord and the Lord said there's sin in the camp. And if you're going to win another battle, if you're going to, if you're going to take this land, you got to get the sin out first. So, they finally found that it was Achan. They put him to death. You have to put to death whatever it is in you that's causing you to sin. 
not just the sin itself. You got to deal with what's in you, the root of that thing that's causing you to be that way. See, a lot of us, I know a lot of reasons why I've done what I've done. A lot of reasons. But that doesn't justify me. Dr. Hegstrom said this. He said, all, he had all the reasons because at age 40, see, his wife, well, in his late 30s, his wife finally left him. She couldn't take it anymore. So he got him a girlfriend, a live-in girlfriend, and he beat her almost to death. They had him in jail. He's facing 15 years to life. What did he do? He confessed and cried out to God and God put him on a path and they made a movie about his life and it was on TV starring John Ritter. Anybody ever see it? I forget the name of it. But this man became a Christian psychologist and he studied ever since and now he's helping. He's got this thing that he does like all life skills where he brings people in for three days at a time and, 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 and works with them. Uh, and uh, uh, helps them get free from strongholds in their life. But all this time he said, look, I, there was a reason why I was the way I was. But it wasn't an excuse because everything I did, I decided to do. Yes. And one lady, one lady even brought, she, was, she came to him and, was, and, and, and what she did is she, she started taping what was going on in her home. Her husband would rant and rave and beat her and cuss her and all these kinds of things. Now, and so he, she started using a tape recorder and you could hear it on the tape recorder. He's ranting and raving and fussing and cussing and slapping her and the phone rings and he picks up the phone and says, hello. And somebody on the other phone, uh, other end begins to talk. He said, yeah, yeah, I, I can be there in 30 minutes. I'll meet you there in 30 minutes. Okay, we'll see you then. Bye-bye. And goes right back to cursing her. Goes right back to his rage. Could he control it? Apparently he could. He could cut it on. He could cut it off. He could turn it on. He could turn it off. Now I'm sure he went through a hellacious childhood and there was a reason why he was. But he still had control. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer thereof, he deceives himself. Amen. Well, if God can change a man like that, he can change anybody. If there is repentance, if there is confession of sin. Amen. Stand up on your feet with me. Faith won't work if you're living a lie. Fasting won't work. Prayer won't work. Worship won't work. Going to church won't work. Doing good works won't work. Not if you're living a lie. I want us to pray before we go, but we got word last night of all things that Michelle, Michelle brought was out in Atlanta, I think, visiting her brother, and she got intense, severe pain in the lower part of her body and had to go to the emergency room. Matter of fact, I think they called the ambulance. They took her to the hospital, and her, her white blood cells are like uh, what, 30, over 30,000 account, 30,000 count, it's supposed to be at 10,000. And uh, uh, so she... she as if she didn't have enough, she, she needs prayer. Amen. So let's lift up Michelle to God right now. Father, we know what belongs to us. We know what belongs to Michelle. There's a peace that does pass all understanding. And Lord, there is a healing that was provided for, for her 2,000 years ago. I ask for divine intervention, Father. I ask you, God, to, to move on her heart and on her mind, on her emotions, on her thinking. 
We know, Lord, there's a lot that's on her right now, but Father God, we just build a hedge around her. In the name of Jesus, and we pray, God, we pray, God, for a miracle. We know what your will is. Jesus himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses and by stripes for healed. So we bring her up before your throne today, Father. And we just say in the name of Jesus, your will will be done in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. S sing it. Yeah, sing it. The blood that Why don't you all come on down? We're not going to be here tonight. Let's all come down like a family. Gather together. Feel him. I'm up. Yes, it does. something you just reach out his anointing's here everything you need is in this anointing just mix a little faith with it he'll dry all your tears he gives me strength yes he does we got in here. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about it. Some of, some of your mothers are already in heaven. They're still part of the family. You know. They're, they're still alive as they've ever been, more alive than they've ever been. Amen. And then there's mothers here that have lost children. But they're still alive. You know, I thank God. We could have all wound up being Muslims, Hindus, atheists. Well, first of all, thank God we're in the Bible Belt. We heard about Jesus. And it wasn't, well, if it wasn't for your mamas, most of us wouldn't be here. In church, I'm talking about. 
<laughs> in the kingdom I'm talking about. <laughs> because mama took us to church, mama. And if your mother didn't, then it's not too late. Amen. You can pray for her. But uh, ladies, God bless all of you mothers and all of those of you that are going to be mothers. I can just say this. I'm glad I'm not you. I'm glad I'm a man trapped in a man's body. I, I, <laughs> I just like being a man. Amen. I mean, hallelujah. You ladies, are y'all y'all enjoy being women? Y'all like that? Uh, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to enjoy being a woman. But you know, some in this house, you know, sometimes we may on Mother's Day we might minister and talk about mothers and so forth and so on but you know uh, the Lord had something different to say to us today and uh, something that was more pertinent something that was on, on time and something we needed amen but uh, ladies I just want you to know that uh, we didn't do anything special but we still honor you we love you and we thank God for you amen we have some wonderful wonderful mothers in this in this house, I'm telling you. And so, uh, and uh, some wonderful gonna be's, amen. <laughs> so take some time today, enjoy your family, enjoy your time off. We'll see you next time, but not tonight, amen. Now, if you need to go somewhere else to church, I'm sure there's plenty of them you can go to and visit, amen, hallelujah. But we'll see you next time, whenever that is. God bless you, have a great afternoon.